she thinks it's really unfair that in our society it's like the the woman is expected to give up her last name and she really doesn't want my last name because of that and so when I first heard that like it hurt my feelings because I felt rejected like my last like she doesn't want my last name like just like a male to make this whole thing about you keep it going Seth jeez What's up? This is John with the Dr. John Deloney Show. So glad that you are with us talking marriage, mental health, dating, figuring out relationships, kids, mental health, emotional health, whatever you got going on in your life. You're struggling with in-laws, struggling with the person you married, struggling with some decisions you got to make with your kids, whatever you got going on in your life. My promise is I'll sit with you and we will figure out what's going on and more importantly, what we can do next. What's the next right step? If you want to be on the show, give me a buzz at 1-844-693-3291 or go to johndeloney.com slash ask. And hey, dude, can we, I was going to say, can we pour some out? But that's that's for like something bad that happened. Can we, do we pop the cork? Well, I don't even know what to say. Dude, the YouTube numbers. Yeah, it's pretty huge. Have lost their mind. Dude, we all get to keep our jobs. <laughs> the scam continues. And who would have really thought, right? I mean, come on. Not James Childs. He quit. He quit to go with... He, he's like... I always tell him he's the opposite of every... James Childs, if you don't know, is one of the OG the OG producer. And um, actually, Kelly had this whole like Big Little Lies thing, and she like got him out of here so she could be the producer. But he like had a choice. Am I going to go with this young upstart... This, this could be this amazing moment, or am I going to go with the old tried and true? I think Dave pretty much made the choice. I think that's a quality, but it's way more fun to blame James. So. <laughs> so good. Are you going to be the guitarist in the Eagles, or are you going to be in this new little band called Metallica? I don't think we're Metallica. No, but I really like that idea. We're like a high school version. Anyway, <laughs> we're let's, go out to, cover band. <laughs> let's go out to Laverne, Tennessee, and talk to Allison. Hey, Allison, what's going on? Hi. What's going on? Not, not, not much. I just have a question. Bring it. So, so about a year ago, we moved to Tennessee. My husband had been in the Navy for 20 years, and we retired, moved to Tennessee, for him to get his big boy job, as he said. <laughs> and, uh, as a non-military guy, I would say he had quite the big boy job, but fair enough, fair enough. So um, when we moved, he, we decided that I would stay home um, with my son, who is now 15, and homeschool. And I had always taught. I, um, I was a teacher for 13 years until our last duty station when we moved to Washington State and COVID hit. And I decided to change careers and became a pharmacy tech during COVID. And so we decided to homeschool my son, but now I'm kind of getting bored. Okay. I don't, I don't want to be at home anymore. And I've got an opportunity to go back to work part-time and still be able to homeschool my son. But now I feel selfish thinking of going back to work and not being home with my son, Mm. even though I can do both, am I being selfish? I, I don't think so. Um, let's, let's back up because you, whenever I'm talking to somebody about this conversation in particular, there's always some absolutes that I don't think are absolutes. And so it's like trying to make decisions inside of a box and I'm glad that you called because sometimes the walls of that box aren't even real. They're not there. They're self-imposed. And so there's a much bigger picture that could happen. So um, why homeschool? Well, he doesn't do well in public school. Okay. Um, from, for, from for a lot of reasons. Learning exceptionalities from behavior, from from special from special learn- needs, 504 he, stuff. He what, is, what's up? He, is, he has special needs. Okay. Um, we have done... When we were in Georgia, he went to a special needs private school that was absolutely wonderful. Um, they specialized in students with ex- with exceptional needs. Okay. And he did absolutely wonderful. But when we tried public school, he just, 
he did not thrive <laughs> at all. Okay. And so we pulled him out. It also was COVID. And he just, his anxiety and things we have tried and it just does not work. Okay. Um, are you in a position to reconsider some of those, whether it's a private school or a public school in your area? We are um, able to reconsider um, all of those options. Um, he does not want to do, he personally doesn't want to do any of those options. Um, and I would say, I would say, of course he doesn't. And I would also say he doesn't get a vote. Now that's too harsh. He does. He's 15 now. So I would sit down with him and have a conversation about it. Um, I recently had a conversation with my 14 year old son about it. Um, very similar things. Um, just as he's entering high school, what's that going to look like for him, for the family, for all of us. But um, I'm going to make that final decision on what's best for the entire ecosystem. Because here's one thing I do know. A well and whole mom is better than an anxious, exhausted, burned out, um, bored mom. So the choices are either re like sit back and go, okay, I know on the outset you've had some difficulties in school A, B, and C. You had some successes in schools X, Y, and Z. We're now we're in a new community and we've done homeschooling for a season. Um, we're going to try this new school out. Um, starting in the fall semester, we're going to we're going to try this new place out. And if it doesn't work, we can always come back here. And if it does work, it'd be amazing. You get some new high school friends and some buddies and and all that kind of stuff. So that's on the table. Option two is on the table. Is you? Let me ask you this: What are you bored with? I don't like being. I I'm bored with not having any adult interaction. Okay. All right. Is, is it daytime interaction or is it nighttime interaction? Is it the world you've created for yourself? I think it's the world I've created for myself. Okay. Tell me about that. I pretty much get up and clean, cook, hang out with my son. And that's pretty much all I do all day long. Why have you made that your life? I, because I don't, I don't know how to meet people in this new environment. <laughs> it's, it, as a transplant, it's the worst. It's the worst. But here's what I don't want you to do. I don't want you to sacrifice your values and something that's important to you for a built-in colleague network. Because those aren't going to be friends either. They're going to be pseudo friends. They're going to be people you're like, hey, how's the weather? Oh, my gosh, is it so hot? Have you tried this, this, whatever? Um, but they're not going to be ride or dies. So I guess my question is, what's going to be different? You go to work part-time. Um, I'm assuming you're not desperate for the paycheck part, but you're going to go to work part-time just to be around other adults? Yeah. So why wouldn't you just be around other adults? That would be optimal. <laughs> You're like, I would love that idiot. <laughs> Are you plugged in with the local church? We have not found one yet that meets the wickets. I've been doing my, um, on, I've been online with the church from Washington still. Ah. Uh. Here's why I ask. I know church doesn't solve all the problems. It's kind of like a workplace. It's got built in. It's a place where adults go, right? On a, right. On a, on a regular, semi-regular basis. But you just gave me something that's very instructive. It's something that I used to struggle with my college students, especially when everyone got a smartphone. When I went to college back 100 years ago, all we had, we, we, email was just in its infancy. All we had was to write letters. That was it. And so I had to go make friends in the new place I was in. And fast forward 25 years, now we have a world where we never have to unplug from the old place. You're going to the same church. You're talking to the same people via text. You're having the same Zoom meetings. But your body's here. 
and it's been a year. Have you fully metabolized this move yet? Nope. Yeah. <laughs> How much of the we decided was he decided? Mm, about 98%. Yeah, that's what I thought. I think that is the at the root. Because you sound like somebody who doesn't super want to be here or you super miss your old life and the fact that this is your new life, you haven't fully sat in it yet because that means you're going to have to grieve the old life. And that means you are yet again, you thought it was just the military dragging you around and that once the military was over, we could finally go do these things and you're right back in the exact same spot. How much of that sounds right? About 95, 98%. <laughs> so what do, you, what do you do next? Because here's what I promise. I promise you, I promise you, your husband doesn't want, unless he's a psychopath, which I don't think he is. Um... Your husband doesn't want a wife who's doesn't love her life. You don't want to have a life that you don't love. Your son doesn't want a mom who doesn't love the life that she's in. So my question for you is how do you how do you create that? I don't know. Yes, you do. You just had two or three thoughts. Do you I do have two or three. Do you fantasize about just packing up and going back to Washington? No. No? <laughs> no. Not ever. All there right. are a couple places I do fantasize about going <laughs> back to. What what are those what what are those things that you exhale? Those little those little rays of light inside of you that you snuff out so that you can get through your day. What are those things? They all happen within these four walls though. Tell me about them. And you're going to feel like a bad mama for saying them out loud. Same anyway. Being here with my son. Okay. Taking my son. Taking my son to Taekwondo. Okay. And like my dogs, <laughs> like just the the sheer joy in their face when they see me walk through the door. You don't like that or you do? I do. I okay. love like every bit of that. Okay. And you do like being there with your son and taking him to Taekwondo or that part is slowly killing you? No, I do. Okay. What are the I, things about this new life that you don't like? <laughs> Just say it. <laughs> I guess the monotony. Mm. Is there any of it that you thought after the military was over, everything was going to finally be different? Yeah. I thought that after the military was over, that the stress uh, would be over. So here's where I think you start. I think you start with a what I would call a one-year review, similar as you would have at work. And if it's safe, and if he's safe, hopefully he is. Otherwise, we're having a totally different conversation. Um, you leave your knuckleheaded 15-year-old at home, and you plan a half day for you and your husband. And 
and you have to be honest with him. That it's been a year and you don't like the life that you have created together in this new place. And that you had some hopes and dreams about what post-military life would look like and they don't. And you want to be a part of building what comes next. And it doesn't mean that people have to quit their jobs. It doesn't mean that you'll have to move. But it does mean that you get to say, here's what I want. Here's what I need to. And if he's smart, he will understand that that benefits him. It benefits the whole home. And if he looks at you and says, I really don't care what you want. I don't care what you need. I have this job. Your butt stay at home. Well, now you've got other issues to deal with. Is that fair? Fair. Yeah. Is he that kind of guy? No. Would he love it for you to sit down and tell him what you're actually feeling? Most days. <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's, that's pretty good for a marriage. Most days. So I think the, the, the question of do you go back to work or not, I, and that's a surface level question. I can't answer that for you. Um, if you have to go make money, then go, go make money. If y'all, if, if it's too expensive, if y'all need the money. Um, if you have a career that meant something to you and was deeply purposeful for you, you were put on earth to be a fill in the blank, um, a child advocate, a teacher, a physician, whatever the thing is, go, go, go work, go do your thing. Um, if you want to get out of the house because you're just bored and the spark that is you is just out that candle, the candle wick is, is just wet. It can be lit. Um, and there's just an opportunity to get out and go be around adults. That speaks to something different, which is you are not alive in your own life. Spend some time over the next week or two with yourself writing down, here's what I want, here's what I need, here's what I would love. And that can be date nights, that can be sexual intimacy, that can be, um, I do want to go back to work, that can be, I love our son, but man, he's got to grow up and we're going to put him in a special needs school out here, or there is no special needs schools out here, so it's going to have to be me, or we're going to hire a tutor, whatever that looks like, put every option on the table. And then take off the ones you can't afford. Take, put on the ones that maybe make us a little uncomfortable, but we'll figure out. But you get a list and write these things down. Here's what I want in my home. Here's what I need in my home. And then have the courage to sit down with your husband on a half-day retreat and say, all right, we've been here a year. Here's what I love about this new place. Here's what's killing me. And I want to be alive in my own home Here's what I want our home to feel like when you get home, when I get home, when we all get home. Here's what I love. And right now, one of my favorite things is just when the dogs see me. And I want a, I want a bigger life than that. I want a more adventurous, full of love life than that. And then y'all build something new. You're worth it and he's worth it. The whole family. And then if you want to go back to work and be a pharmacy tech, go be a pharmacy tech. But I imagine that the adventure is way, way bigger than that. We'll be right back. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Hey, it's Deloney. Some people think relationships are going to be easy if they're going to be right. That's almost never true. Great relationships get that way because both people put in the work to make them great. And therapy can be a place to work through the challenges you face in all of your relationships, whether with friends people at work, your romantic partner, or even how you get along with yourself. So if you're thinking about starting therapy, I want you to try BetterHelp. Because therapy isn't just for people who've experienced trauma. It's great for building skills so you can be the best version of yourself. So you can show up in those relationships and do your part to make the relationship great. BetterHelp is completely online, so it's flexible enough to fit your schedule. Just fill out a short questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no extra cost. Find the path forward to make all of your relationships incredible. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Deloney today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Deloney. 
All right, we're back. Let's go out to Raleigh, North Carolina, and talk to the great Seth. Hey, Seth. Hey, Dr. John. How are you doing? Rocking and rolling, man. What's up? Uh, I'm just really happy I got through. I found your show like a month ago. I've been listening like crazy. Think you have like the best advice. I was like, Dr. John's the guy to call with my question. Well, I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. What's up? Yeah. So, okay. So my girlfriend and I have been dating for about two years now, a little over two years, and we're pretty serious. Um, We're not engaged yet, but we've definitely talked about marriage. And one thing that's come up is what last name we're going to take. And so we're just to give some context here, we're both Christians. Uh, We both grew up in a Christian home. But for me, in my specific background, I never even really was aware of people taking the the woman's last name or of you know picking a different last name or keeping the same last name everyone i've seen and known automatically like the husband is that's the last name for the family it's the patriarchy so, seth yeah. that's why america's falling i'm just kidding i'm totally kidding <laughs> so um so anyway i when we first started talking about this it really surprised me that she had such a strong opinion on this because i had never even thought about it really before i just knew that I wanted us to have the same last name. Yeah, it's that male privilege. You don't even have to think about it. She does. She <laughs> yeah. loses her personhood, her name, and you just bebop through life, Seth. <laughs> well, it's funny because that's, that's actually kind of what she said, although not <laughs> not in a mean way. But um, she, she would definitely consider herself a, a feminist. But she, she has some really strong opinions on this. She thinks it's really unfair that in our society, it's like the, the woman is expected to give up her last name. And... Um, she just, she really kind of resents that. And she just, she really doesn't want my last name because of that. And so when I first heard that, like it, it surprised me. Cause again, hadn't even really thought of that. And it, it hurt my feelings. Cause I felt rejected. Like my last, like she doesn't want my last name. Like, you know, what's so wrong with, with me. And even though I know that's not really what it's about for her, but I was still, gonna say, just like a male to make this whole thing about you, keep it going. <laughs> Seth. She is. Um, but the thing that bothers me, though, is when I talk to my family and my friends about this, they are all of the opinion that to, for me to give up my last name and take her last name would be very emasculate. Well, they're, my hold on. They're me. idiots. Okay. They don't get a vote. <laughs> you, you, like, can I just be super direct with you? Is that cool? Yes, sir. All right. Yes. Um, by the way, I know all 360 degrees of this conversation, of the arguments, of the like. These are like some of the greatest friends I have. I don't have a I don't have a position, if you will. There is yeah. a tradition in our culture, and I'm saying our culture very, very loosely. I don't even know what your culture is. I'm just speaking for me. Um, mm-hmm. There is a I'll say in a broad Eurocentric Western culture that you take the the man's last name. Okay. Yeah. Um, and yes, it is, it happens so commonplace that people don't even consider it. Mm-hmm. And there is understandably this idea that my wife had a different name until she met me and she gave mm-hmm. up her, her name, right. To join into this new thing that we're building. Right. Yeah. And so that's fair all the way around, but at listening to you, here's what I'm picking up. You're a guy who walks through the world, very unsure of yourself. Mm-hmm. And you lean on other people for direction, for values, for, I don't know, what do you think, man? Like, I okay, uh, ooh, uh, and that's just kind of your ethos. Mm-hmm. Right? Am I right or no? No, you're, you're really on point. <laughs> okay, so what is it about Seth? Forget the name, forget what your moron buddies are saying. Wh- what is, like, what is it about Seth? that you don't trust? Well, I just... There you, well, because I, I, well, I asked a guy one time, what, what is it about Seth that you don't like or trust? Oh, that's a deep question. I mean, it's like, where, where do I start, kind of? I, it's just so confusing sometimes. Like, I just, I just want to be sure, and I don't know. It's, it's the religious aspect of it too, because I don't, like, no, 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 no. You're just, cl- you're, 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 you're bringing in a whole bunch of different variables so that you don't have to look you in the mirror. Mm. Cause here's why. If you have to look Seth in the mirror, you have to say out loud, she has a point, And yet I want a traditional, um, marriage. 
just mm-hmm. an OG traditional marriage, and I want to um, keep my last name. And the person I marry, I want them to keep my last name. Mm-hmm. Or I just could care less, and my dad's going to throw a fit and blah, blah. I don't care. Or, man, if she's digging her heels in on this, what's she going to dig her heels in on when we have a home, when we have kids? Mm-hmm. And if this is how, if she, if she, if she cuts and runs when it comes to these principles, it will get harder and harder and harder as the stakes get higher and higher and higher. Mm. And if you do that, you have to look in the mirror and say, maybe this relation, maybe, maybe I love her, but mm-hmm. maybe this isn't the one for me long-term. And you don't mm-hmm. like that responsibility, so you pawn it off on your friends, you pawn it off on religion, you pawn it off on all these different people. You have to make that call. Yeah. Otherwise, otherwise, I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't want you marrying my daughter. Mm. I want you to, I want, I want the person my daughter marries to be able to stand firm in values. And I want mm-hmm. them to be united in values. I want them to have way different beliefs. Because if mm-hmm. they have way different beliefs, they're going to have wild adventures in their life. And they're both going to, iron sharpens iron, they're both going to grow and develop into something that none of us can foresee. But yeah. man, values got to be aligned. It's hard to be mm-hmm. married. It's, it's easy to be married with different beliefs. That makes for adventure and fun and chaos, which is awesome. It's hard to be married with different values. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It, but that means you have to do the work of looking at the foundation of your life and saying, what do I value? And right mm-hmm. now, all you value is what other people think about things. <laughs> and I know this is not why you called, but I want to get to the root of the <laughs> issue. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's not all I care about. I would just say it. It definitely influences me. I think because of uh, just certain issues, we probably don't even have time to get into that have happened to me. But I, it's something I'm working on. Like I, I'm aware of that. I just okay. Good. 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 So is Seth trustworthy? Yes. Okay. Then what does Seth want? I want to love her and to to walk with her through life and to have a family with her and to honor God in everything I do and to treat her as his daughter and to be the best person that I can be and just make a make a positive difference, not just in her life, but in the lives of any kids that we have and anyone that we that we come across, you know, like take on the world together. That's what I want. Okay. Does she want that same thing with you? I think so. Does she want to take on the world together with you? Or does she want you to join her in, in the fight that she's already started? Seems, seems more like that. Okay. I think if that's we not, do get married. That's not together. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's okay. She can absolutely have somebody who will who values the same things she values and wants to go to war on those things. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And so, let me be super clear, just like just for the record, just to put mm-hmm. my, put my dirty laundry out there. Um, my wife took my last name when we got married. Mm-hmm. We also, shortly thereafter, went to work at the same university. And I really, really encouraged her to keep her uh, maiden name so there wouldn't be two Dr. Deloney's working at the same place. Actually, my mom was a professor. And so for a season, there was three of us. Yeah. And I really encouraged her not to do that. So I don't like, oh, it's going to be a masculine. Shut up, dude. Mm. That, That I don't care about. Sometimes there's just some practical whatever. Yeah. But to buck tradition at a societal level, I want to have some pretty firm convictions before I do that. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And you don't have that. Otherwise, you wouldn't be calling me. Mm-hmm. Well, it's just, I, I think, I don't know if it's fair to say I don't have strong convictions because I do. It's just on this, I was, the thing that was throwing me for a loop was what they were saying about as it relates to spiritual headship of the family in the Christian faith. And 
and the symbolism behind the last names and this and that. And it's something I never really thought about. And I was trying to sort through it. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking like, I, I don't really know because I, I don't, it's just, there's not like a clear cut answer. I suppose. Yeah, I, know, I mean, I can tell you, I mean, we, like, I'm not going to not marry her because she won't take my life. I think that's ridiculous. I would not be like, Oh, that's a deal breaker. You have to have my last name, okay. but my pastor sure seems to think so for some reason. And I, I think that's extreme, but it's also concerning to me thinking about, huh, well, am I wrong about this and that the spiritual headship thing, is it important to signify that the man is the spiritual leader of the, of the house? And it also brings up another discussion that she and I had where kind of looked to me like what she's looking for in a marriage is basically for me to kind of just do whatever she says. And it's like, she'll only do. And listen, that, only, that's what yeah. I want you to think through. So we could talk about theology and we could talk about historical property rights and how women were glorified cattle that took the owner's name. Okay. We can go down that rabbit hole and I'll sit with any theological conversation. We can have that conversation. Yeah. Okay. That's not what this is about right now. Mm -hmm. Um, What this is about right now is I can see it a mile away. You're with somebody who is not with you in equal mark and measure. Yeah. And that's why I want you to think through what happens. I, you are, I'm just going to say you are uncomfortable with this. Fine. Mm -hmm. Fair. You're allowed to be. And it doesn't make you evil or bad or a terrible man. It doesn't make you any of those things. Mm -hmm. It's just uncomfortable. It's different. Yeah. And it's not what I knew growing up. No, yeah. well, and some of the things I knew growing up were wrong, and I needed to change them. Yeah. But some of the things that were just tradition, I'm not just going to throw away tradition because it's old, right? We've burned yeah. down grandma's house for four tall and skinnies, and that was stupid because grandma's house was built to last for a long, long time. And these tall and skinnies are going to fall down. And so yeah. I, I'm not a fan of just burning tradition to the ground. We've done that culturally, and I've written about that in a couple of books. We've done that culturally, and we are paying a heavy, heavy price. Both feminist scholars and more traditionalist scholars, everybody's writing about it. We've created mm-hmm. chaos, okay? So I'm not just going to burn it down just because it's old. But you're uncomfortable with it. The bigger issue is this. If this is how y'all solve problems, if the solution to your marital problems is do whatever she says, I'm telling you right now, your relationship's not going to make it. Either that or you are going to be a shell of yourself. Yeah. You will be a man who lives a quiet life of desperation. You will hate your life. Have you ever seen the the Disney show, Good Luck, Charlie? On on the show, the dad there kind of is made out to be like what I feel like I would be. It's like no say, just kind of a joke, just sort of there. And it's like they care about him, but we all know he's not really making any important decisions whatsoever. His opinion's not that great. Kind of feel like that's how it would be. And then I wonder, well, can she change? Like, I love her and I, I just, she's special to me. And it's. Listen, I'm going to go back to the very first question I asked you. Okay. Mm -hmm. What is it about Seth? Someone told you, somebody trained you, somebody beat it into you that your job is to shut your mouth and make sure everybody else is okay. Mm. And to make sure that your needs are zero. And I'm telling you, brother, that's wrong. And I'm tired. I'm tired. And this isn't at you, man. This is me with you. I'm tired of our culture believing that the only path forward in righting some of these historical wrongs, there are a bunch of them. And anyone who says there's no historical wrongs is a moron. There are. Mm -hmm. But anyone who believes that squashing and crushing and beating up somebody else, another group of people is the solution is wrong. I agree. But that's you, Seth. 
you love the idea of this person and you want this to work and she may have been the only girlfriend you've ever had that really was in into you in this way. Is that fair? Mm, well, one other, I'd say. Okay. But man, y'all have a long, long way to go before you get married. I mean, you can get married tomorrow. Do what you want to do. But this will be the rest of your life. And I know from experience, this isn't the big ones. The big ones come with children. The big one comes with where we're going to live. The big ones come with, the big decisions come with our home and who we're going to be in our community. And if the answer to all of that is, well, whatever she says, man, you're worth more than that, Seth. So maybe the path forward for you is a break. Hey, honey, I want to take 30 days and just get my feet underneath me because I don't even know what I believe anymore. I don't even know what I value anymore. And maybe you spend some time with a couple of men that you trust, not that are your own age, but that are 10, 15 years older than you. And you do a deep dive, a quick deep dive on what does masculinity mean to me? And what does marriage mean to me? And what does making joint decisions together mean to me? And what does head of household mean to me? By the way, that's a service-oriented conversation, not a tiebreaker conversation. Head of household means you are on the bottom. You do the heavy lifting of that home. (sighs) What does all that mean? Because right now it means whatever she says it does. And I can hear it. You're drowning. You're drowning. And you ask the question, well, is she just going to change? Nope. 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 Not unless y'all decide we're going to do this together. I wish you the best, man. I'm going to send you a copy of Own Your Past, Change Your Future. I want you to read that book cover to cover. I think it's going to have some answers in there for you. And get a couple of men in your life that you trust and aren't just going to be like, yeah, bro. No, you don't need those guys. But you need a couple of men to walk with you as you answer some of those hard questions. And you can loop back and look at this woman that you're thinking about spending the rest of your life with and say, here's what I value. Are you in? We'll be right back. All right, we are back. All right, Kelly, tell me about this. I, I don't watch the Disney Charlie. What, I don't know what they're talking about, but. So I remember this show when my son was younger and he would watch Disney and my daughter. And I don't know how it is now. It's been a lot of years since they've watched that stuff. But my husband and I always called it the Disney dad. And it's, he's another child. He's stupid. Mom has to fix everything. She runs everything. Um, dad is always, you know, overweight. She's beautiful. And it's just that dad's always a doofus. bumbling moron. He is. Okay, yeah, he, yeah. That she has to just kind of put up with and get around. But he's lovable. You know? It's the character that Jim Gaffigan plays in his comedy. Yeah, it okay. is. It's exactly right. that. So when he said that, I knew exactly who he was talking about. She takes charge. She has to fix it all. She has to run it all. And he doesn't have a say. Gotcha. And, and man, I get myself in all kind of trouble for this conversation. I, I, I know that's the cultural... That's our cultural norm right now, right? And I also know that there's a massive backlash happening and with women frustrated that they have to be the husbands in their homes. And what does that even mean? And what about traditional masculinity and femininity and the energies that come along? All that is just a mess. And I think it's the great Terry Reel that said women were sold a lie, which is the greatest, the greatest um, pathway to your happiness and joy and love is you become more like men. And men were told the greatest pathway you have is to just never, nothing should change. And we should just get back to the way things were, which by the way, never existed. And so you've got two people who are just flying past each other and it's just created a mess. It's created a mess. And um, golly, man. 
Maybe that's a whole conversation we need to have on the show, just a new conversation about masculinity. There's a great book, um, last name is Reeves, R-E-E-V-E-S, and it's called Of Boys and Men, and it's probably the most important read of the last year for me. It was really extraordinary, but it talked about, so we've lost a generation. They're gone. They are gone. Um, and it started with their dads who learned from their World War II dads, I'm going to come home, I'm going to sit, and I'm going to be quiet. I work all day, and I, I need quiet. And they learned passivity. And they interp interpreted that to just whatever, man, whatever's cool. And then this started 25 years of messaging of, well, you've ruined everything. You're the cause of everyone's bad and everyone. So men just were like, cool, I'll play video games. I'm out. And here we are, right? And that's oversimplified, but what a mess we've got. Well, <sighs> there's a toxic, toxic masculinity and there's also a toxic femininity. And I think they're at war with each other because – you know, we as women, there's the we got this right, all the right, but and then we're scared to give any ground. Mm. You know, and um, because then, I, I always think the problem is we're listening to culture and society instead of doing what works best in our homes and what's right. Right. There you go. Is we've we've given up that to be like, well, this is how it's supposed to be, or this is what Disney shows me, or this is what Facebook shows me that. Um, you know, the whole, and of course there's exceptions because there's abuse and there's situations course, like this where this course, doesn't matter. Course. But, you know, the, I have to hide all the purchases in the trunk and this, you know, in the trunk of the car, don't tell him I bought this or I'm sneaking out to go do this or whatever. It's just that it's whole idea. It's all caricature. Yes. Yeah. It's all and, caricature. But I will say we're, we're listening to all these outside voices, but there's no models on the inside. There's no models of what masculinity looks like. And it's not Beefcake 2000. And it's also not ever not going to the gym, right? It's also uh, being able to do hard things in service. of It's all of it wrapped up into one. And there's just not a good conversation to be had. And then you end up like this poor guy on the last call who's got a person he is in love with and head over heels. And she's like, I'm going to run this house, not with you. I'm going to run this house. And if you want to be a part of what I'm, where I'm, where this bulldozer's going, get on. You can get on the back, and I'll, I'll chain you to the back, and I'll drag you behind me. We're going that way, um, and that's not a way to build a marriage. And neither is Andrew Tate, Alpha Two Thousand. Like oh, I'm gonna do a, dude, that's that's stupid too, right? Snap into a slim gym, and so in your onesie, like I like we have. There's gotta be a different conversation that we're having, man. Oh man, Peter Pan. Let's go to Vancouver and talk to Jessica before I get fired. What's up, Jessica? Hi, how's it going? <laughs> Good. Sorry, you caught us on the end of a wild last call, and I'm... No, that was wonderful. I'm so glad I got to listen it. in on that. Oh, hey, what do you think? Am I crazy? No, I think there is a lot of weirdness between the dichotomy of masculinity and femininity right now, especially being, you know, mid-20s, lady, single. Um... Dating is weird. Dating my, boys my age. They are boys. They're boys still. It's, you know, I saw a great TikTok that was addressing splitting the bill on the first date. And, you know, if a boy or a man offers just to do that, to, you know, say, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, I didn't realize we're just going out as friends. I thought this was a date. And kind of tackling, masculinity, attacking it. In that sense, and but even the idea, the idea that I can't wrap my head around ever sitting down on a date and thinking in any shape, form, or fashion, we're going to split this bill. Right, right. You know, I have historically in long term relationships um, will alternate at times. Well, like, after, yeah, I, but I mean, that's after a while, right? And, but what you're yeah. doing when you're in a long term relationship is you're building something new together, right? Exactly. But up but until no, the then, first I, date, geez, first date, tenth date, awkward. I'm paying for it. Like, it's just weird. And by the way, I'm teaching my son that. And Good. I'm going to tell my daughter, you always have some money in your pocket so you can walk away at any moment. Right? It's both Good. and. It's both and. But anyway. Absolutely. Okay, so anyway. You, you're a good, uh, we have not, we're not going to talk about what you called at all. I'm just going to talk about me, okay? <laughs> um, but real quick, you're you're in your 20s? Yep. Okay, so you're experiencing this. Tell me if I'm off. And if I'm off, please tell me I'm off, okay? I haven't been 20 okay. for a minute now. But as a 20-year-old woman, are you college grad? 
Uh, I did some college. Okay, some Didn't college. Finished. <laughs> okay, that, that's fine. That's fine. Um, you were told you can do anything. You can be anything. You are, to quote Seinfeld, the master of your own domain. You are the king of your world, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you're going to meet somebody who's the same, and y'all are going to create a thing together. And so mm-hmm. all that sounds good in practice and principle, and you're out there doing all of these things, making all these decisions, making this money, getting your job, moving up the ladder, etc. And the boys out there are all video game players, and you're like, oh my gosh. And you find yourself saying the words that you never thought you'd say. Will you just be a man, right? Mm-hmm. It might tell yeah. me. I'm, tell me I'm crazy, or tell me like, no, nah, that's actually no. kind of right on. No, you're on to something because, like, like you're mentioning at the regarding the last call and like the swing of feminism. I think it's all. Ah, uh, this might be a hot take, but I think it's almost swung a little too far to the point where we swing back a little into some more traditional. Yeah, I'm gonna get canceled. <laughs> like, well, I, I, I think, I, here's the deal. I'm gonna tell you. you <laughs> We're not going to cancel you. I'm going to tell you <laughs> that take is I'm hearing it over and over and over and over and over again. Anyway, like I, you're not crazy. I'm not, you know, like I don't love feeling having to be in my masculine all the time. And like, yeah, no, I think, I think the pendulum's going to swing back a little bit. And my fear I is it's going to, my fear is going to swing back. Harmony. My fear is going to swing back too far. And yes, so my I hope mean, is that it's not. Um, but geez, Louise. Yeah, Jessica from Vancouver, thank you for risking getting canceled on behalf of my little piddly show. You're awesome. All right, so why'd no, you call? I, what can I do for you? Well, um, I have found myself in kind of a weird living situation, and I'm hoping to get some advice on how to move forward, maybe how not to move forward, just what to do. It's It's Specifically regarding the lady I have found myself living with, my roommate. Okay. Um, Yeah, so we met through work. And, of course, you know, when you're at work, you're putting on your best face. You're at work. And so... Not here. Have you seen Kelly? She never... (laughs) I didn't mean that aesthetically. I meant that, like, you're just mean. You are beautiful. All right, go ahead, Jessica. Sorry. (laughs) No, no worries. Um, yeah, so I had found myself in a, a bit of a pinch. Um, my landlord essentially got run evicted. And so I had to find a place relatively quickly that was pet friendly. And I don't know if you know much about rent out here, but it's through the roof. And so, <laughs> yeah, it's insane. Um, yeah, so this lady, she was like, oh, you know, my, my son just moved out. I have a room available. Help me out. Help you out. This will be great. So I was like, sure. Like, again, I only knew her through work. I knew her, you know, as in her work mode and professional mode and that sort of thing. And so I agreed to this. It seemed really mutually beneficial. And so I move in and the first week there, we get a, a text from her existing landlord that they were putting that house up for sale. And so then together, we were now in a bit of a bind to find a new place that was also pet friendly within our budget. And so we were kind of scrambling around. I finally found a place uh, for us because she was kind of dragging her feet. She had rented that. <laughs> get, go, home for... get to it, Jessica. Get to it. I talked too long at the beginning. All right. So <laughs> y- sorry. Y- y'all, have found your- y'all have found yourself in a place. Yes. And um, are y'all both on the lease? Getting... We are, unfortunately, both on the lease. And um, is she B A N A N A S? Well, so it started out rocky. She didn't have the deposit. I had to cover her deposit. Um, and she's just, our, our personalities clash so hard. Like she, I find her very negative, very unhealthy in spiritually, physically, financially. And it's really crescendoed this last month when she sent me rent late. And I had very specifically made it clear to her that since rent is coming out of my account, that. I need her half at least one business day prior. Like, no questions asked. Like, that is just how we need to do it. And so I had texted her January 30th, the Tuesday, and I said, hey, you know, rent's coming out. Haven't gotten it. Just nudging you. She replies the next day saying, yep, I get paid tomorrow, the first, and I'll send you money then. And I, you know, reiterate, you know, rent comes out anytime after midnight on the first. I'm going to need your half today. And she says, well, I'm in trouble then. Sorry. Uh, if you get any like insufficient funds, we use, I'll cover it. My bad. And I reply, you know, that's 
it's not really the issue. My credit's attached to this. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Y- y'all are texting this back and forth. When's the last time you've sat down and said, hey, this is not working? That's uh, another part of the issue, John. Ever since this debacle, she has avoided me like the plague. So I get home. She doesn't leave her room. I knock on her door. She doesn't pretend she's sleeping. Um, How old is she? I, well, I, so she is over 30 years older than I am. She is in her 50s, John. Oh, what a box of farts, Jessica. What have you done? I right, listen, look, like, <laughs> just how much longer is this lease? Until the end of August. What does it look like so, to get out of a lease in Vancouver? Expensive. That's that's what it's boiled down to, which is so frustrating, is that it's it's a cost thing. Like I'm having to almost put like a value on my well being and hold on. I don't think you know, so. I don't think so. Can I tell you something crazy? No, no yeah. I, I think you get to choose. Yeah. I think you married somebody who is um, struggling on a lot of different places in a lot of different areas, right? Mm-hmm. And cool. Y- y- Let me say it like this: any choice to be miserable between now and August is a choice to be miserable. Yeah, I wouldn't choose that. Would it be awesome yeah. if you had a roommate that was thirty years older than you? That was like a cool old thirty years older than you. Like me and yeah, Kelly like working I'm, together. She's at least 30 years older than me. We, but we have like fun. Like she takes tequila yeah. shots at work. She's like super fun, right? Like it's, I'm just kidding. She doesn't. But like, it would be cool if that was, if that was happening. It's not. It'd be cool if there was a roommate issue and y'all could just talk, but you can't. No. Cause she won't. She, she won't. She pretends to be asleep. You know who does that? My eight year old daughter. Thank you. Right. Right. But listen, I don't engage. I'm her dad. Yeah. You are not her dad, so you're just her roommate. So if there's a late fee, then bill her for it. Otherwise, go about your day. Because the, the biggest thing is that uh, the landlord can come after us for the remaining rent if we were to break the lease early. Then don't break the and lease. So, don't break the lease. And just boot her out? No. Just do your life until... <laughs> until August. Just grind it out? There's no grind. I mean, why are you giving her this? She goes in her room and <laughs> shuts the door and won't even talk to you when you knock on the door. Yeah. Just pretend that, just, that that door is walled off. Yeah, and just... And when you see her, say, just, hey, good morning. Hope you have a great day today. And then go about your life. Am yeah. I oversimplifying it? Absolutely. Am I making it like... No, but that's what I need. I need that because I think that's been part of my issue. It is. Like, you're I over-dramatizing am... it. If she was violent, uh... if she wasn't paying, if she was having like people, random unsafe people spending the night, totally different ballgame. Okay? Yeah. They're not spending the night, but they are around. Okay. Um, and, you know, like drug use is high. Okay. And Call the police. I'm... Call the police. Yeah. Yeah, right. call I, the police. Because here's what you're doing. You're taking all of these external variables that are just swirling and swirling, and instead of dealing with them, there's a legal drug use in my home. I'm not going to have it. My name's on the lease. Yeah. If there's drugs here, again, I call the police, period. Yeah. Okay, cool. I've dealt with that. And you have to actually call the cops. Number two, yeah. if somebody has had drugs, they're not welcome in my apartment. If they're here, I'm calling the police because I don't want them here, period. Right. Number right. three, you have to pay rent on time. If you don't pay rent on time, you get one miss, and then I'm going to ask for you to leave. Yeah. But, like, instead yeah. of doing that, just piece by piece, you just take all those variables and shove them down inside your own chest. Yeah. And then here's what sucks. It kills you. It doesn't solve any of the problems. It just makes it where you can't sleep or go to the bathroom in a timely fashion. Yeah. Right? Right. Right. Because yeah, I feel like I'm taking on so much of like you the are. responsibility, and you're not. You're again, not like, hold on, you're not taking on the responsibility. Advice. You're not taking on the responsibility. You're taking on the emotional strain of this whole thing. Yes. There's no responsibility. Yeah. You pay your bills, and to her credit, she's paying her bills. Maybe it was a day late yeah. or something, but she paid her bill. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And, and can I even can I even be more provocative? Can I be more pokey? Please. 
in the same way that she goes in her room and shuts the door and pretends to be asleep. That's kind of you when it comes to dealing with telling her, I don't want drugs here. I don't want these strange men in my house. Yeah. I don't want your dog crap on the floor. You're avoiding those conversations too. So let's just either head right into it or pay the $10,000 or whatever fee and get out. But I wouldn't spend another second just doing on it because that's not going to solve the problem. It's just going to, it's just going to slowly drown you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, geez. You're right. I, I have always struggled with confrontation and boundary setting, but this is a good exercise. Dude, this is, this. this is 101. This is going to make you like Rocky after this. Or, oh, or so your, roommate will, your roommate will kill you. She'll kill you. It's, it's basically, ah, no, I'm, I'm stronger than her. But, <laughs> no, but <laughs> No, here's why I was saying that. Most of us think that on the other end of a boundary, we're going to die. Yes. What's the worst thing? We're going to die. What if I tell my toxic boss I'm not coming in on Saturday again? What's going to happen? I'm going to die. And it's when we get to the other end of it and we realize we didn't die. Now, if you're dealing with people who are dealing drugs, illegal people in and out of your home, and it's unsafe, please get the police involved. Yeah, please. Because I was listening to another one of your episodes that um, about a narcissistic mother-in-law and how she'd threaten self-harm, and that's that's been gently dangled as well. And that's something I also need to keep in mind: is just call the police. Like, call the police is, every time. My that, there you go. Yeah. And when yeah. she goes, "What are you doing?" Say, "Dude, you just told me you were going to harm yourself. I don't yeah. know how to deal with that. They do. Yeah. Right. No. I, yeah. Yeah, I've been dancing around this a little, a little too long. We'll turn um, the lights on, turn the music off, and head right into the middle of it. Yeah, yeah. Or, or, right. or here's the other thing: mm-hmm. just make yeah. peace dancing. Yeah, it's yeah. that middle ground that's killing you. Yes. Yeah. Is that fair? No, that is that's fair, and I need to hear it. There, there was once a great Canadian um, poet. Uh, I think it was the poet laureate of Canada. Her name was Avril Lavigne. And she once said, there was a skater boy. I said, see you later, boy. Oh my God. I think that deep poetic insight is, 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 is relevant here. I think you're right. And Avril is right. As always. Uh, uh, Right. Is Avril ever not right? (laughs) Um, but yeah, here's what I, I, I would really work hard. And again, I'm oversimplifying this. I'm, I'm under dramatizing it. I know it's hard. I do. I know it's hard. I know it's messy. I'm trying to give you what I would tell my daughter if she found herself in a, in a similar situation. And that yeah. is, I'm not going to spend any emotional energy on the, <gasps> ah, mm, I'm not doing that either. I'm going to make peace yeah. with, I got till August. I'm going to ride this out. I'm going to spend a lot of time not here. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to go on dates. I'm going to go have fun with my life. I'm just going to sleep here or um, I'm going to confront this head on because there's not going to be drugs in my house. There's not going to be unsafe men in my house. There's not going to be people who don't pay rent in my house. And I'm going to mm-hmm. confront it head on. And at some point I'm going to get with my landlord and say, I need you to help me evict this person. I'm still going to be responsible mm-hmm. for the rent. You can start finding a new roommate. Um, mm-hmm. But I think, I think handling this head on is the way to just deal with that, uh, that discomfort. Yeah. No action kills anxiety. And I've not been taking action. I think too, I've been rational, like, I don't know, making excuses of like, well, she's not coming out of her room. She's not approaching me. She's not wanting to talk about it. Meanwhile, you know, I can also try harder at talking to her about it. Um, well, hey, she's also a grown up. She can say, I, I'm not talking about this with you. I don't want, I'm not yeah. talking to you. I don't want to talk to you. I'm through talking to you. Bye, Felicia. Because oh, and part of my problem too is I keep thinking in my head I'm like she's in her fifties like why am I stop, taking this stop, on like, stop. Is that this? doesn't matter you don't know what war she's fighting who knows who knows what kind of struggles she has who knows yeah should You're it right. be that way no but it is so I, I wouldn't I wouldn't get in her head and try to figure out why and what Not, that's just a waste of your energy too yeah yeah you're right. It's limited. I got to conserve my energy for... For actual real... Yeah, exactly. So put it on the table. What do I need? And what am I not putting up with anymore? 
and we're gonna sit down and have a conversation. Even if you have to slide a note under her door, circa 1981, yeah. right? Like I'm gonna put yeah. a note under your door. We're having a we're having a house meeting at whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or text her, whatever yeah. that looks like. Um, but go ahead and yeah, knock it out, knock it out. You're worth this. And quite quite honestly, she is too, man. And you just get that weird tension. Ah, like we're just having it. Let's do, we're gonna do it. We're gonna have the meeting. Whew. Thank you for the call, Jessica. Hey, everybody, stay tuned. We have some cool, um, a cool thing that happened uh, coming up next. Hey, what's up? Deloney here. Listen, you and me and everybody else on the planet has felt anxious or burned out or chronically stressed at some point. In my new book, Building a Non-Anxious Life, you'll learn the six daily choices that you can make to get rid of your anxious feelings and be able to better respond to whatever life throws at you so you can build a more peaceful, non-anxious life. Get your copy today at johndeloney.com. All right, we are back. Kelly, we have a cool cool things that happened. Cool crap that happened. Cool crap that happened. All yes. right, what is it? All right, this is from Jeremy in Canal, Fulton, Ohio. All right. He says, in December, I graduated with my master's degree in clinical mental health counseling hey. from Texas Tech University Health <laughs> Science Center. Who is this? His name is, well, I'm not going to tell you his whole name, but it's Jeremy. He's a little bit younger than you. so. I but mean, I might have been one of his professors. Well, no. Hold on. Uh-oh. Um, and he graduated debt-free. Just phenomenal. I did not, so congratulations <laughs> to him. My wife and I just celebrated our 20-year anniversary in January, and we've become entirely debt-free, including our home, in August. Good grief. Yes. That's amazing. My graduate advisor was Dr. Lynn Jennings. No way! Yes. All right. For the, well, I've explain. Had, I've had Dr. Jennings on the show in, in very, very at the beginning, and she is somebody who I've reached out to on the way to work. At this, She's one of my go-to national experts. Uh, she's amazing. All right. So he said, I just wanted to write in and say that my wife and I both enjoy listening to the show. I am a former police officer, and I now work for a nonprofit organization that serves solely first responders and their families. Learning to be a good uh, good clinician is difficult, but I appreciate your information and you provide on the show. Jeremy, dude, that checks all my boxes, man. Guns up. Um, which, by the way, for those of you who aren't from Texas, that's the slogan of Texas Tech University. Get your guns up. Doesn't play well in other parts of the country. Um, and works with police officers who I love. And Dr. Jennings, who's one of my favorite people on planet Earth. Both Lynn and Steve, her husband. Uh, they're both just amazing. And his name starts with J. So that's just a, that's just all wins all around. Very cool, man. That is cool stuff that happened. And he graduated debt-free. Doesn't have a house payment. I know. Completely 100% debt-free. Imagine being, I mean, the stress as a police officer, and obviously they were in debt that he was all dealing with, and now completely debt-free, helping people that are stressed like him and their families. What a great guy. So I've, I've, I've got this hypothesis that's slowly brewing. Um, that's probably the worst word I could have used. Like It's slowly like um, crystallizing. It's becoming clear. Um, I wonder what our culture would look like if mental health providers and medical providers didn't owe anybody any money in their personal life. Because when I talk to folks behind closed doors, it's like, I have to do this diagnostic because I have to get whatever, or I had to prescribe this because my, my, my patients are coming in saying, I need this, I have this, I Google it and I need this. And if they don't give it to them, they just leave and they go find another provider. Like, what if they didn't owe anybody anything? And they could say, hey, we're going to stick by medicine. You don't need another antibiotic. You need this. You need whatever. What kind, how different would this country look and feel like if providers didn't owe anybody any money? I, I just think that there would be something profound. I, I, may, I may work with a doctoral student and do that study because I would be fascinated to do a qualitative inquiry of medical providers and counseling providers who owe a bunch of money and those who do not and how that impacts practice. That would be fun. If you're a graduate student looking for a research idea, hit me up. Um, go to johndeloney.com slash ask and put research idea in the topic and I may reach out to you. Love you guys. Stay in school. No new drugs. Bye.